Okay, welcome to part three of this RPG tutorial. Um, I'm actually going to go back here a little bit and fix some things. So I was never really happy with this map. Um, so I've designed a new map that I think looks a little better. And I used this uh, program called RPG Map Editor. You can get it from uh, deepnight.net. You can download it for your computer or they also have a version that you can use in um, your browser. And it's pretty easy enough to use. Um, basically, it just lets you draw the map. So if you want some grass, you just draw grass where you want it. You want path, um, you can draw those things. Um, and something that I tried to do, as you can see here, is um, do like a, a, a clear wall around the outside so that um, nobody can kind of escape it. Um, so I've got that wall and a row of trees. So I've kind of got like a logical end at the, um, at the uh, sides so that you can't really get out. So something that was really important is the use of lights. And you can see me here putting in lights. Um, this stumped me for a little while because I couldn't figure out why everything was black. And it turns out it's because I didn't have any lights. When you're in draft mode, um, it doesn't matter. But once you go into normal mode, uh, it'll only work if you've got the lights. Um, and the thing that was confusing me for ages is um, how do I get the lights to look good? Because uh, when you first add a light, it kind of has this color and I didn't like it at all. It looks like this, basically. It's like a yellow beam of light everywhere. Um, but if you don't want that, um, which you probably don't, it's pretty easy. You just turn it to be a transparent color. Um, and then you get the light effect, but you don't actually have to see the color, um, if that makes any sense. So just chuck in a bunch of these lights, put them everywhere around the level. And then um, when you're ready with that, you can go to, um, I think it's export or download as a PNG and then load that into Scratch. Okay, so I've loaded my map into Scratch. I've made it as big as possible and set it as a sprite, um, same way that I did it originally. Um, but if we play this at the moment, um, there's one major problem which I don't think I had solved before is that you can just, uh, I want him to stop there, but you can actually just walk straight off the map, right? You can just keep walking forever, um, which is not what we want. I want it to get kind of blocked by this row of trees and the wall here. Um, so I want it to stop so you can't keep going. And same thing for all the way around the outside. So the way that I'm doing this is on the map, I'm actually creating some if statements there. Um, so I've, I've moved the map to the place where I want it to stop, checked what the X value is. Um, in this case, it is uh, uh, minus 420. So if the X position is greater than minus 420, which means I haven't gotten to that point yet, then it will allow me to use the right arrow so I can keep moving. But once I hit that point, then I'll know the right arrow will no longer work because it's inside this if statement. Um, and then I do the same thing on the other side, but uh, for the left arrow. So um, I have to figure out what that position is. Um, and then basically, yeah, so as soon as I hit that point, it'll just stop working, as you can see here. And then you just do a little bit of fine tuning to make sure that you can get right up to the end um, to the exact pixel that you want. So you can just keep changing that setting. And it's the exact same process for the top and bottom. Um, I just make another if statement over the up arrow and the down arrow. Okay, and here's the last thing I'm going to do in this level. So if you see, when I'm right up in the corner here, I can see all this white space that I don't want. Um, all I'm going to do is just literally put a color in the background that kind of matches the color of the walls around the outside. So I just hit on make a new backdrop um, and then just play around with the color until it matches um, this kind of dark purpley gray color that the bricks are. Um, so here I'm just, uh, I'm just playing around with that color till I think it matches. And then I just drop that in as a backdrop. And then it doesn't matter if you go to the edge of the level because it kind of, um, I don't know, it just kind of looks like something that's supposed to be there is there, basically. And that's it. So in the next tutorial, I'm actually going to improve my character um, by making the walk animation a bit more interesting and use a more interesting character instead of this scratch mouse. 
uh, scratch cat, I should say.